So guys, hello, welcome back to the channel. And the long overdue first part of the uh, Long Range Desert Group 35th Scout Command Car. Um, yeah, I got kind of distracted towards the tail end of last year, um, but all you guys said you wanted to see a build series of this, um, this particular vehicle. So this is the kit, which is Tamir's Long Range Desert Group command car. Um, in the kit you get seven figures. Um, so what I propose to do is do sort of a, a build series with the command car itself um, and then um, do the figures and put it on a dio base with um, the SAS Jeep. Um, that I did in my, my last build series. I don't propose in this part to talk about the tools and everything else that I'm using um, because that was talked about at the start of the Pink Panther build series. Um, so if you go back through the channel, look at the first part of that, um, you'll see what tools I'll use. Nothing's changed. I'm using exactly the same stuff to build this. Um, so we'll get this built, we'll get it all painted and, and all that stuff and then we'll move on to the base itself and the figures and doing the dio. So I'm doing it out of the box. Um, the only thing that I've bought in um, addition to it um, is some stowage from Value Gear. Um, I think this was about £20 for all the stowage. You get loads in there. Um, so we'll have a look at that. I'm not going to review the kit because it's been done to death. It's an old kit. Um, but what I'll do is when we come to the part of the series where we're looking at the stowage, um, then we'll have a good look at that. I've not used Value Gear stuff before, but I've heard good things. It's resin. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how good it is. Um, and then that should add something to the build as well. Um, so that's it, guys. Um, I don't think there's much more else, much more else, much else to talk about. Um, I think it's a build series. So without further ado, we'll head down to the bench. Um, and we'll start building. So, yeah, let's get on with it. Cheers. So, guys, here we are. We'll get cracking with the build. Uh, so, we've got the usual bump on the front. I'm not going to bother reviewing this kit, it's been done to death. So, straight into the instructions then. So, the first thing we're going to be building up is the chassis, suspension, wheels putting it all together um, and then what looks like the front front bumper so we also have a correction um, as well which is for part uh, three which is attaching the uh, the wheels etc um, and it says follow this in place of the corresponding section in step three on page two uh, so it is, can't see the real difference to be honest, but we'll see when we come to the uh, the parts. Ah, okay, there we go. So here, it's showing these bits uh, where the steering rod attaches. And it's showing us that they're pointing downwards. Um, and this is showing us that we need them pointing upwards. So that's fair enough. So we'll move that out of the way. We'll get the instructions out of the way. And we're looking for sprue C. Tires are sprue D. So sprue C. So I think the best thing to do really is to uh, start cutting bits off and uh, start putting it together. So, there we go. This is the first uh, proper model kit, shall we say, that I've put together in uh, in a in a fair few months. I've um, been focusing on the the Warhammer stuff. Um, so we've got the main chassis; it's in one piece. And we've got the leaf spring suspension, so there's four of those. And 
everything looks pretty pretty well detailed to be fair um, so we'll try and get this chassis all together in this part I don't want the, the parts to be going on for ages and then what we'll do is UMP sanding sponge and we've just got a bit of a seam line down the side here so we'll just get rid of that this will make very light work of that two bits there. These are where we've cut it away from the spruce. We'll just get rid of those. Perfect. You don't have to be too massively concerned about this because uh, obviously it's not going to be it's not going to be seen. So, leaf springs. So, we're looking for, it actually tells us in the instructions uh, here and here that we've got large and small locating pins. So, you know, you're going to get it pretty much the right way around. It says. So, we've got large there, small there. Yeah, and that's just typical, typical to me really. Um, they're they're pretty good at telling us what we need. So as always, we will dry fit the part. So we've got a locating locating look there. Which is good news. He says. Right, let's have a think about that. Let's do the real ones first. <laughs> so we've got large and small. So we get some extra thin. Bit of a shake. A little bit, you don't have to saturate it in the glue. And that should. Yeah, perfect. There we go. So, what I'm going to do, guys, is speed the video up at this point. You don't want to see me locating. All of these, a bit boring, so I'll speed the video up and then when we come back we'll uh, see where we're at. So guys, that's the chassis together, pretty much, with the leaf springs. Um, we've got two bits left to put out. <clears throat> so we're looking for C42 here, which goes at the front, and C46 which, and C47, which looks like a rear bumper and, uh, and tow hook. So we'll get those ready. So we've got C42, which is this bit here. It's just a, like a sunk cover, I think. Um, and rather than sand those off, because we've got a bit of a curve, just very gently, with a sharp blade, trim those up. And make sure you keep keep the line of the part itself. There we go. So, that is going to glue at the front there. 
And then we need C47 and C46, which is that bit and that bit. So with these small parts, very careful as you cut it off so it doesn't ping, never to be seen again. I forget the amount of times I've done that over the years. And there we go. So again, rather than sand these, I'm just going to trim them. Nice sharp blade. And there we go. And we'll just make sure that that's completely off. So I'm just going to hold it, hold it in place. Sharp blade. And there we go. Lovely. So, bumper is going on in that sort of position. So that helps if you put it the right way around. So yeah, make sure these big gaps at the back um, so we're going like that so these bits here are just going to glue onto onto there and then the tow hook is going to go onto that now we have got at the end here we've got these pieces and that's going to pick it up particularly well but we'll try so we've got these bits now when I've dry fitted it, there's no locating holes in the bit of the bumper for those. Um, so you, you end up not getting a very good match. So again, sharp scalpel or sharp blade, and we'll just cut those off. Which should allow us then, all being well, I'll give them a bit of a, a bit of a sand just to smooth them off and they're all being well our bumper should fit in there like that which it does excellent so again a bit of extra thin So that is always the benefit of dry fitting because once you commit to glue you can end up in a in a world of pain you've got to prise the piece off sand the glue off and all that so dry fitting just a few seconds saves you a lot of hassle in the long run so a tow hook, let's make sure we get it the right way up. Bearing in mind this is the underside of the chassis, so the hook needs to be pointing the other way. And again, I've got a little locating hole there, bit of extra thin. And there we go. Now, a very tiny piece, my fat fingers, but nothing that we can't overcome um, yeah and I think we were talking about this on the uh, the live show on Friday <coughs> excuse me frog in my throat um, we were talking about this on the live show on Friday um, that as the years pass by um, we're all starting to notice that our eyes aren't what they used to be uh, now this isn't too bad, um, but certainly with some of the Warhammer stuff I've been doing, Optivisor is your friend, um, but once you start using it, it's really difficult not to use it. So again, that, that cover goes on there. Should slide in the gap. Which it does. Excellent. And there we go. That's that there. So that's it. That's the chassis complete. Um so if we 
refer back to the instructions. So we're moving on to part two, which is the wheels. Um, we've got rear and front. So the rear one's a little bit thicker, obviously just because of the load that these things will be carting around. So the, the front wheels are slightly narrower. So what we'll do is I'll show one. They're very, very straightforward. Um, so we'll do, do one rear wheel. I'm just going to cut that off the sprue. Now I'm not too worried about sanding the inside as long as it's, well not flat, but as long as there's nothing sticking out because um, essentially we're going to not see that tyres are going on it. So we've got C, C13, we're now with C45, which is this hub here. C45, and then we're looking for C44, and then what we're after is D2, which is going to be a little rubber insert, excuse them, rattling through the box. And there we go. So, <coughs> I haven't even opened these yet, but sprue D is essentially the tyres, um, and on here we've got two, and that is just a little rubber insert, so we can just break that off, he says, no we can't, it's good quality Tamiya rubber, obviously. So just with the blade, hold the piece in place. A little cut. So it is telling us, this is your main wheel here. It tells you where to apply the glue. So that's just on the inside. Like so. And then we're applying this hub in there. Like that. And then this end cap. Oh, no. See, I nearly forgot. Put the rubber insert inside of that hub there. Just make sure it's as flush. Flush as it can be. Our extra things probably evaporated somewhat. Right in there, and then that bit should just slide over all being well, all things being equal. And there we go. And then, what that rubber does is it allows you to attach it to the, the vehicle but also remove it, paint, and etc. So, that's all together. I'm just give it a little pass over with the sanding sponge. Just to make sure we don't have any major major problems when we're trying to put tires on, etc. There we go. So that's a wheel done. So what I'll do, guys, is again I'll speed the video up while I do the rest of the wheels. Because um, you've seen one, you kind of seen them all, to be honest. Uh, so I'll speed the video up while I do these. So guys, there we go. So we've got two rear wheels, two front wheels, all assembled, we've sanded them. I'm not gonna put the tires on yet because of painting, etc. Um, so we've got the wheels done, so we'll put those to one side. Um, it's fairly easy to remember which is which the rear is, is wider 
than the front um, as we can see there so this being the front wheel there is a difference and we've got this this hub on the back of the rear wheel um, so fairly fairly straightforward um, don't need to label those up or anything so moving on to the pot three um, so we're just going to attach these bits um, I'm not putting the wheels on them um, for painting purposes uh, so we're looking for this is the rear rear drive axle I think yeah is it no front obviously it's not rear wheel Stephen is it it's front um, so we're looking for C26 C27 C18 and C19 but obviously we've also got to bear in mind this correction uh, same part numbers uh, just putting it on in a, a slightly different way so if we cut those off the sprue so we're looking for C18 which is this bit here C19 which is next to it which is always nice and to me I'm pretty good at that um, putting kind of the parts you need sort of close together on the sprue um, if you build an Italian kit or a Revel they tend to be all over the place mini art as well I mean mini art's just mini art but yeah um, it can be a little bit frustrating you're going through sprue after sprue after sprue and yeah if only they were all in the same place so again just got trims that off very gently I'm cutting into the part as such we're just removing removing what we've got um, and again with these bits again you don't have to or for me I'm not being super super careful I'm being careful with the blade but not with the part particularly because these bits aren't going to be seen so what we need is this part sort of upside down these discs are going to attach on we need these two two bits pointing outwards and then according to the correction we're going to attach that on it says pointing outwards puts it on inwards Excellent Luke. <laughs> so that goes on just there. Now, first issue maybe. So we'll pop that on. There we go. So that's the kind of position you want it in. So you put it over, over the part and it is loose. So we just need a drop of glue or do we? In fact, because I want to position the wheels at an angle to show it a bit more natural, um, what we're going to do is if we get a front wheel, we've got these two locating holes there. So if we push that on, I'm guessing, fingers crossed. And we may be in a position where we can still move the wheels and we can so what I'm going to do I know I said I wasn't going to attach the wheels for painting however things change and this is where you're kind of thinking like 10, 12, 15 steps ahead obviously we're going to be putting this on a dio base so I want the wheels in a more natural position rather than just straight so rather than glue that in place, what we're going to do is glue the wheel and then that should give us the ability to be able to turn those wheels once it's on the base and we'll just have to test and adjust as we paint it um, because as I say the, the natural positioning of it is quite important I think when, it, when you're doing a dio um, because you want it to look I want it to look as natural as you can so again we'll pop that on there and we'll be gluing that gluing the wheel to hold those in place 
like so. So make sure the wheel's nice and flush, otherwise it's going to look awful when you put it on the base. You'll have wheels all over the place. Now to keep those, because they'll obviously bend out like that, and then we've got this bit here. Now this should just clip into place. Just be very careful. You don't want to snap it or we'll snap the uh, the part. So that just clips into place, and that should keep the wheels moving together. He says that wheel just come off slightly. So we'll just push that into place, and what we should have there is the front wheels natural. If we turn them, they're going to be turning in the the same direction and they're going to be equal uh, which again is obviously quite quite important as we're thinking ahead to putting it on the dial base so we've got that bit there so last step for this particular part is we're going to attach I think that's going to be yeah that's the rear so we've got C31 C43 and C25 and that's just going to glue because the rear wheels don't turn obviously so it's just going to glue onto these leaf springs here so C31 C43 again next to it pretty much on the sprue which is handy and then C25 which is the drive shaft by the looks of it no real clean up required on these so it does say here to paint this which is this bit here in matte white so at this point I have no idea what happened um, it was only when I came to uh, upload the footage and that I'd see that, that it split it into two separate parts so we, we kind of got a, a cut unplanned and everything else um, so we'll crack on with the rear axle um, yeah sorry about that I don't know what happened with the camera had a bending or whatever um, but these things happen um, so it just cut right in the middle of filming um, but it did then start again straight away weird um, so anyway I'll stop talking let's get on with the rear axle and the drive shaft. Cheers. Absolutely. So the idea of that was underneath the vehicle there was a, a light that pointed down at the rear here. So they painted this white so at night when they were driving in convoy and it's still done to this day um, when you're driving in convoy you can have all the vehicle lights off except this convoy light underneath which illuminates this so the vehicle following you can see where you are um, but from the air or the side you can't see the light and give away your position um, so that's what that's for and we will do that but we will do that uh, pretty much right at the end once all the chassis is painted um, that's when we'll start bringing out the white and stuff because as we all know white can be a uh, problematic colour so I normally use either a yellow or a grey base coat first and then white um, which makes it a bit smoother and it makes it a bit more vibrant if that's you know if that's what you're looking for you're not painting a, a spaceship or whatever and you're looking for like a dirty white or yeah it's don't just put white onto primer generally um, in these small bits I mean car builders and stuff do it but they pick the color of primer very carefully and um, to get that white vibrancy so then as we know that's just gonna fit in that position there. I'll leave that there for now. And then we've got the drive shaft itself. So a little bit of a tiny seam line. So again, sanding sponge all the way around. Get rid of that dust, bit of dust, get rid of that. Um, and then that should fit all being well so if it's into there 
and into there. So what we should do, the way we'll do this, rather than messing around, is we're going to glue it into the gearbox here. Just make sure you get it the right way round as well because that will save you problems later on. So that just slots in, a bit of extra thin. Just to hold it in place for now, then we'll glue the rear axle in place. And there we are. We won't put any extra on at the minute because we still want a bit of a bit of play in it just so we can make sure this rear axle's on secure. And then we can come in afterwards with some extra thin just to make sure it's all all glued and where we want it to be. And just, just make sure we're in the right right place. Because we want a good there we go. You can almost feel it kind of click into place. Um, which is telling me I'm in, I'm in the right place. Ah, oh, look at that. Overconfident there. <laughs> but yeah, you can feel it sort of click home when you're in the, the right the right spot. Um, and then we can see the drive shaft's put itself in position without any sort of manipulation from me. Just want it as true and straight as it can be. Otherwise, when you come to put all the other bits onto the chassis, it's all going to be wonky and it's just not going to look look right. So it's worth spending a little bit of time here just to make sure that you've got it spot on. So that that side's in. And there we go. I don't know whether you actually heard that. There was like a very faint <laughs> click. And there we go, it's in the right place. So now I'm happy with the position. What we can do is just go around here, a bit of extra thin, just to make sure that this isn't going to move anywhere. A bit around here. And there we go. So that's part four done. So we can get rid of that correction now because we've done that. So chassis all together. Main chassis is one piece anyway. We've got the leaf swing suspension on. We've got the rear axle, the drive shaft into the gearbox. And we've got the, uh, the front leaf springs there. We've also got the front wheels with the, uh, the steering rack. That's going to go there. But I'm not going to glue that at the minute. Um, because when we come to painting, I want to paint this separately because I want to get be able to get underneath and, and paint the engine block, etc. So that's where we're at. We've got the two rear wheels, and for safety, I'm going to just push those on, and that's where that rubber poly cap comes into its own because you just push those on, but you can remove them later on. Um, I'm not going to put the tyres on yet. So that's it guys, let me go face the camera um, and we'll see where we're at. Cheers. So there we go guys. Um, so we have the chassis together. We have the front wheel assembly together. Um, what I did neglect to do or film um, was the front bumper. Um, so as we can see the front bumper's on now, um, dead simple to do, um, I just switched the camera off too early. Um, as I said, it's only the third build series I've done, so my video editing and building on camera is still very much uh, a work in progress. But there we go, that's part one done. So we're moving on to part two where we're going to assemble the front, the cab, the, uh, the engine bay and everything else. Um, and then we'll just keep progressing through. This isn't going to be a short build series. Um, reasons for that, there's a lot going into it. 
Um, so it's not just the vehicle, we're going to be doing the figures, the dio base and everything else. So I'm not going to put a time limit on it. I will endeavour to get a part filmed, edited and uploaded kind of once a week going forwards. Um, there may be a time where that drops out and it's once every two weeks or whatever. Um, I'm very, very busy at work. Um, so it's just finding the time. These videos take a long time. Um, and building on camera is, is a, for me anyway, a much slower process. Um, I am looking at perhaps doing it differently. So recording the footage while I'm building then voiceover. Uh, a few people have recommended that, but I'm still toying with that idea um, because that's something I need to practice really before I sort of put the videos out there. So we'll see it going forwards. Um, but this is gonna take a while. Um, it'd be great to see some of you guys building along as well. Um, let me know if, you, if you're sort of building along or you're having a go at the kit. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just crack on with it. So it's going to take a while. It doesn't matter. Um, I want to do a good job. I don't want to rush it. Um, it may take all year. Who knows? Um, I'm hoping it's not 50 odd parts. But uh, we'll certainly uh, endeavour to get the parts out as regularly as I can. So if you haven't already, you look there. There's a subscribe button. Um, so if you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification, every time I upload and release a video for this build series and all the other stuff, um, then you'll be notified and you can uh, you can have a look at it. Um, if you like it, hit the like button. If you don't, hit the dislike button. But let me know why. Um, I'm a big boy with big shoulders. Um, so let me know why you don't like it and if there's something I can change. Um, and that's it really, guys. So I'll get this video edited, get it all uploaded, um, and hopefully you'll enjoy it as we go forwards. Um, quite an in-depth build, as I say, or will be. Um, but it should be fun, and uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy it and get something from it. All right. Till next time. Stay safe. Happy modelling. Bye bye.